Alrighty guys, good morning to you all here. It is February 26, 2025. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. We are just about to get Dixie Alley in the Ohio Valley in our severe weather season ongoing here for the spring season of 2025. And here to officially release my uh, 2025 season forecast for you guys. This is going to be a pretty brief video. Just wanted to get out my outlook to you guys, give you guys my thoughts on what I'm seeing, kind of go over some analog runs. And just in general, what we're about to see is we're already forecasted to see severe weather going into the first and second week of March uh, through SPC as well as on our models and ensembles. We're starting to see that trend already. So I'm going to walk you guys through my initial thoughts here, my opinions on what we could see this year for the 2025 season for spring. I'll do a fall video kind of check up later on as we get closer to summer and fall. Uh, but this will just be very, very brief, very narrow. And um, I hope you guys like it. Alrighty, and as you guys can see here on your screen, this is the outlook that I have made, kind of worked together and got a got a visual here for you guys to understand what we're potentially going to be seeing here. Now, this is based off of analogs. This is based off of, you know, pre previous years that we could be seeing with our ensembles, our our, our MJ over over in the uh, West Pacific Ocean. A lot of factors go, that go into this forecast that I've officially made here. And basically what we're going to be seeing, and we typically do see this on average more than anything, is a below average season for tornadoes, severe weather in general over here in portions of the West Pacific. You can have a couple tornadoes with these atmospheric rivers early in the season as well as late in the season when we're getting our uh, low pressure systems to move through off the Rockies here as well as you get these dips in the jet stream that typically like to go up and around the West Pacific here in the central portions of the um, West Coast. So not really expecting any big trends in above average precip as far as, or not above average precip, but above average tornadoes and severe weather go. You can get an occasional tornado or two, especially in California if we get any of these coastal systems over in New Mexico as well, Arizona, Colorado. Uh, but I do think still we're going to be on that either right at average or below average trend for the uh, shaded orange colors there. Now as we go into the pink shaded, or the, not the pink shaded, but the blue shaded colors here, uh, we've got below average up into portions of the South Dakota there, North Dakota area, Minnesota, Portions of northern Iowa kind of be flip-flop there as we go throughout the season. And then Wisconsin and Michigan being below average. And that is just going to be to, due to our overall troughing. I think our overall troughing as well going to best basically be riding underneath of the... Um, we're going to be sitting underneath of a ridge, underneath of the um, northern high plains a lot this year, allowing for, I think, less moisture access. I think we'll get an occasional severe weather uh, as we go towards the late spring and into the fall. But just overall, in general, uh, I think those blue shaded areas there are going to be below average. And that also includes the northeast as well, expecting below average, where we see uh, lesser moisture pulled in, lesser instability. You can get an occasional severe severe setup in the northeast. We actually had a couple last year that did produce a couple intense tornadoes over in the uh, Baltimore area up and around there. We had an EF2 last year in Baltimore in a marginal risk zone. So you can get an occasional severe weather risk zone uh, in those areas there, but I just, I think personally, given our troughing and what we're going to be seeing, I will update this video as we go into uh, the later half of spring and into the summer portion. I think we might get a little more active for summer in those blue shaded areas. And then as always, been talking about this a lot there in that red shaded area and that yellow shaded area, you've got your traditional Dixie Alley that sits here in the uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Nebraska area. I think we'll stay right at above average, if not slightly above average. It's going to be all due to where our troughing sets up. How does our jet stream set up? Do we see our jet stream to the west of the Rockies? here uh, or on the east side of the Rockies or do we see it after it gets into the plains and that's all dependent on troughing uh, that will happen as we go throughout the spring severe weather season but as always analogs do favor uh, when our MJO is very very um uh, strong and impressive, and we've got decent sea surface temperatures in the Gulf. You do typically see an uptick in severe weather and tornado outbreaks uh, in the Ohio Valley, in the Ozarks, in the Missouri Valley, Mississippi Valley, and down in the Southeast. And I do think uh, already going into this next week here, the first week of March, we've already got severe weather on tap for these areas in this uh, red shaded area. So I do think if you're in those areas that are slightly above average or above average in general, you need to have a tornado action plan in place, a severe weather action plan in place in general. But I do think overall the Ohio Valley is the Dixie Alley areas are going to be above average. I think also in the green shaded areas here where we have right at average uh, tornado season as well as severe weather season any of these lagging cold fronts that move east also as we get into hurricane season as well I do think we'll have tropical tornadoes as well uh, with those landfalling systems along the east coast and down into the gulf as well so this will add to those uh, original and overall uh, tornado reports as we go towards the summer season so uh, that's kind of an aspect from what we're going to be seeing with our outlook there I'll, I'll just kind of let leave that up here on the screen so you guys can see that for a minute but once again I do think Dixie Alley and the Ohio Valley will be above average I think our best shots of seeing those significant tornadoes will be in those areas specifically down along the coastal areas in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas, as well as into your traditional tornado alley, Texas, Oklahoma, um, Nebraska, Kansas. They're getting into your dry line setups as we get closer to April and May. So typically known on average, April and May are big time tornado seasons for Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas. But I think we'll start to see that shift just ever so slightly this season. Uh, we've actually not seen an above average tornado season in Dixie Alley uh, since basically last three or four years. I believe our last year was 2021 when we did see that. Some bigger years analog wise, 
1974 super outbreak, 2011, 2013, our big EF5 years we've saw violent tornadoes are also analogs for this season. So just something to be very, very mindful of as we go into this severe weather season. All right, I'm going to show you guys two analogs that have been issued from uh, the Storm Prediction Center. And these are based off of similar years where our pattern is set up, our oscillations are set up, our uh, sea surface temperatures in the Gulf and East Coast are set up. This is a very, very uh, important analog just to kind of see where we could see our stronger potential for just tornadoes in general at. And if you go based off of analogs, 1950, 55, 56, 61, uh, 1974, uh, the big super outbreak back uh, in, in the plains, as well as into Dixie Alley, also 2011, 2013, 2021, 2018, all of these big years where we've seen tornado setups uh, and our large violent tornadoes and, and you know, potentially catastrophic fatality events as well. Uh, sadly, this is these this is kind of along that same track where we could see that threat for uh, another big year for tornadoes as well as violent tornadoes. And the most above average potential that we could see, uh, the above average just in general tornado aspect could be, you know, the Ohio Valley, Western Kentucky, Southern Illinois, you know, Missouri getting into Tennessee, the Dixie Alley down there in Mississippi, Alabama, and then as far as Louisiana, East Texas, Oklahoma. So this is where the analogs are basing their forecast at um, based off of just in general, like I said, overall analoging and um, history with our climatology in severe weather and tornado genesis. Uh, so we'll give you guys that for our uh, tornado analogs. All right, and this is going to be our strong violent tornado analog. So it just gives us an idea of where our strong EF2, EF3, 4, and potentially EF5 tornado uh, analogs have come into play. And once again, same similar aspect here, 1974, 2011, 2009, 2013, 2021 in here for all of our analog years. And, and once again, this could be a very, very historic tornado season if things do play out the way our analogs have shown as well as our models are showing our ensembles. So we're really going to have to wait and see, especially as we get into April and May. But if March does start off with a bang like we are forecasted and we're seeing models do already um we've like i said we've already got a you know as i'm making this video a day seven slight risk for march 4th coming up here next week so um if that does in fact happen these analogs will be pretty accurate as far as predicting where we're going to see that at and already this is where we have that strongest potential for ef2 plus tornadoes through the season here uh this basically goes from now all the way to the end of the season where does that sit at Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, portions of Kentucky here. We've had big tornadoes in Kentucky, big time in Oklahoma, back up here in a Dixie Alley as well. So um, those highlighted areas in the red, going to see a, a, a higher chance of above average potential for violent tornadoes. The blue shaded areas there, those lighter big blue areas, a little bit below average in typical Minnesota with Louisiana there. I think Louisiana might be a little bit of an exception depending on where our troughing and where our ridging sets up at. And that's just an overall aspect of what I think could we, we, we could potentially be seeing this year as far as our tornado season goes. Um, like I said, guys, no not going to be a long video. I do appreciate all the love, all the support. We will be going live and covering every single severe weather event this year, as well as posting forecasts every single day. So I do appreciate you guys for watching this. Make sure you share this out as well as um, leave a comment. If you have any questions in the comment section, we'll do some clarification more on this in future streams and in future videos. But other than that, guys, be safe, be weather aware, and um, we'll see you guys in the next one.